Hello there and welcome back to the channel. Today we're going to be talking about FPV and specifically the DJI Digital FPV system and if you are having light leaks on your goggles because there is a couple of solutions available and I'm going to show you them in this video. Secondly, we're then going to be talking about the ear unit and around if you're having problems with either video stuttering or even your ear unit shutting down in flight because there has been a few little niggly issues coming to the surface and it might be related to your flight control. Finally, at the end of this video, we're going to talk a little bit about the Bite Frost system from Fat Shark and give you guys an update on what the situation with the beta of that is. Okay, so the first thing I want to talk to you guys about is the goggles and specifically light leaks because a couple of people have been reporting that they don't fit them very well or some people say they fit fine and others say they are absolutely terrible. However, the reality is for me, they're okay. But if you are a person that is having problems with light leaks around the side, there are a couple of solutions that are now available to you. Now, the first one is some shims that you need to fit to the goggles. Now, these are available to download as an STL online. And if you've got a 3D printer, you can actually print them off yourself. And the idea of these shims is that you download them, you will need to print them out, and then you'll need to shape them to fit the goggles. But the idea is they go in between the foam and the plastic housing on the goggles themselves because the foam mask simply peels off with velcro what you're going to need to do is get some double-sided tape mount this onto the goggles now it will need to be manipulated because when you print it it's printed on a flat bed and it isn't going to be quite the right shape however if you then heat it back up with a hairdryer or a heat gun you can then manipulate it in place and the idea is that it goes in between the face mask and the edge of the goggles and it's hard for me to show you this because I haven't actually fitted these properly to mine yet. However, the idea is when you've done it, it will force the mask out on the side a little bit and push it tighter into your face on either side. So sort of push the sides round. Now, as I've said, this is available to download offline. A very kind user has put this up on Thingverse and it's available from KW Boost. And all you need to do is search for DJI FPV goggle shims and the STL file is available to download. So if you've got a 3D printer, you can do it. If you don't have a 3D printer, if you know someone with one, you can just download them and get them for them. If not, you could order it from one of the many companies online, but I'm not sure what sort of price it would end end up at by the time you pay postage on it they are not actually a lot to them and there is a chance you might get it wrong damaging them so I would suggest trying to find someone with a printer and ask them to do you a favor and print a set off now if that solution isn't ideal for you there is another one and that is that you can use the face mask of the oculus quest goggles now a user john on facebook posted this and actually showed it in place on his set of goggles and what you can do is purchase the face mask and stick it over the top on yours now it isn't a hundred percent perfect fit there is a little bit of a gap down by the nosy states however it is much better fit than the original one for some people now this face mask is available to buy but it costs 29 dollars, so it is going to be an additional expense if you are having issues with light leaks if you do have a printer i would strongly suggest trying the shims first because it is a quick and easy solution you are going to need a little bit of sticky tape or velcro tape to be able to hold them on but what they do is they do push it in a bit more and probably would solve the problem for most users the next thing I want to talk about on the FPV system is not the goggles themselves, but it is actually the quad end and the ear system. And specifically, if you're having problems, because I've seen a number of reports coming up over the last couple of weeks of people either getting stuttering, really strange lag behavior, or even complete shutdown and reboots in flight randomly. Now, these all seem to coincide with people powering their ear unit off their flight controller with a built-in BEC, and these are mostly people flying with a 6S battery. And the basics of this seems to be that whilst many of these flight controllers have the connector on board for the DJI system and they offer compatibility, the built-in BEC may not be fully capable of providing all of the power the ear unit needs, and at some point it then reboots in flight. Now, DJI have been checking some logs on this, and I've seen a few reports that they've noticed this behavior in a number of cases. So if you are having some issues with your ear unit behaving strange, 
strangely, you're not getting the range you should be, or the video is just not right, try making sure you're powering your ear unit directly off either your battery, if you're between 2 and 4S, or off a dedicated back if you're using a 6S. I think myself, most of this is probably related to some over exaggeration of the specification on some flight controllers because at the end of the day these things are fairly cheap overall and we're expecting them to power themselves and the ear unit as well and it's probably not realistic even though the ear unit uses about seven eight hundred milliamps if they rate it at one amp you are at the higher end of that scale and as that flight controller begins to heat up it could give you issues now if you are looking for a beck to use the best one to go look at is this tiny one from maytech and it is a 7 to 21 volt input between 5 and 12 volt output at 1.5 amps and this should supply adequate power for using your ear unit on pretty much any quad and because it is a micro back it's not really going to take up much space only on the very smallest of frames i can see this being an issue but it is worth looking at and again if you are having that random behavior in flight do check that out because it could very well be the cause. But remember, your ear unit only works on 2 to 4S. Do not power it directly on 6S. You could burn it out. Finally, the last thing I really want to talk to you guys about on the FPV side of things is the Fat Shark Bite Frost. Now, I actually had the opportunity to have a look at one this week. One of the fantastic users of this channel contacted me and said, look, I've got one in the UK. Do you want to have a look? And he offered to send it to me. I really appreciate the offer. Sadly, I just couldn't make it happen. However, um, I am closely monitoring the beta and I'm watching how things are progressing forward with it and so far there aren't really too many issues. It is interesting that Fat Shark released a video this week showing us the OSD capability that they are working on and what was really interesting around that is the fact that you can actually move the on-screen options around within beta flight. Now I don't know are they actually plumbing that analog HD camera through the flight controller just like we used to do with analog FB before or they're actually doing that via the UART. I guess they're using UART but you never know and it'll be interesting to see what they're doing but they have given a bit of a hint of what is going to be coming yes there is more than the current dji system offers because obviously we only have battery voltage at the moment everyone is hoping more comes for that in the very near future there isn't a lot i can say on that at the moment hopefully when there is some news i will let you guys know but on the fat shark side of things they are clearly progressing on that with regards to my thoughts on bike frost i haven't used it so it wouldn't be fair for me to give you my thoughts from what i've seen so far the overall opinions on it are it isn't as good as DJI however it is better than analog and there is this sort of midpoint with it I think DJI have absolutely kicked it out of the park with regards to how the system works with the dual control link the fact that it's bi-directional so you can control the ear end from the goggles and use all the settings back and forth whereas the fat shark system is more one way it is more traditionally like analog FPV you've got to land the aircraft to change the camera settings and things like that but it does have some advantages as well the latency appears to be very low and it isn't veerable either so whereas the latency does tend to shoot up on the dji system as the signal goes down it doesn't happen on the fat shark so it is one versus the other Finally, I really want to mention about goggle support and specifically module support for Bite Frost. Now, I've got my dominators here, which obviously have a HDMI input, and the Bite Frost system will work with that fine. However, Fat Shark have openly stated this week that they would not expect a module to be coming out to make it compatible with existing set of goggles. And there are a couple of reasons for that. The first is that there is no HD input in the module bay. So any module they do make would have to convert back down to SD analog, which is low quality. And you're going to be basically throwing away all of the benefits of that digital system. And secondly, it's power consumption. Like all of the digital systems, they all are a little bit power hungry because they're real-time processing digital data and there simply isn't enough power in most sets of goggles to be able to power any module that they were able to build as well. Now that isn't to say future versions of goggles won't support and I think the likely chance is you're going to see the goggles change a little bit from Fat Shark from now on and maybe see a change on how they do their module bay. However, at this moment in time on current models, you're going to have to use the HDMI input. 
Um, that's pretty much it for this video. I just wanted to give you guys the updates. I'll put a link to the shims for these goggles in the description of the video as well. I'll also put a link to the digital system from DJI if you'd like to support the channel too. There's a link to it if you did want to buy it. I'll also put a link to the other head band piece as well so if you want to order that you can with regards to the air system as i said if you are having issues on your digital fpv and you are powering it off your flight controller do try a separate back and see how you get on you might find it solves all of your problems that's it for this video thank you very much for watching please do subscribe and i will do another one again soon Please do subscribe to the channel and check out all of the other videos we have available. They are also split into playlists to help you easily find the ones that are relevant to you. If you would like to support the channel, please check out the links that are in the description for each video. You will find the links for the products we've been talking about and it's only by you guys purchasing via these links that allows us to keep making videos and buy products to talk about in the future. Please also check us out and follow us on all of the social media platforms such as Twitter, Instagram and Facebook. We're beginning to build these accounts up and whilst it is early days, I would appreciate it if you would like, share and follow us on these platforms. Finally, please also check out my website, www.madrc.com. Now, this is somewhere that we've been putting some of our blog posts and things like that over the last couple of years. So if you're interested in having a look, please do go check it out. That is it. Please do click that subscribe button. Thank you very much and I will do another video again soon.